Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India lecture we talked about mm1 case and i'll just continue with that and see the uh, uh, basic thing to be noted is that see the difference between mm1 case and mm1k case is only the q size that is uh, that is you're restricting the number of people in the system so for mm1k the uh, number of states only go up to k for mm1 uh, the states were uh, 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 could go up to infinity so therefore um, the derivation as I, I saw you show, showed you in the last lecture, uh, the derivation was straightforward. And then see, um, I also showed you that as uh, k goes to infinity and if uh, uh, of course, here uh, in this case, uh, here we require that O is less than 1 and that I am saying is that uh, the formula these are all valid when rho is not equal to 1, because otherwise you cannot divide by 0. So, uh, for rho less than 1, we showed that as k goes to infinity, L will go to rho upon 1 minus rho, which is the k infinite case, <coughs> that is which is the m m 1 case, right, as it should be, right, because when you allow your k to become large, then it reduces to the m m 1 case. And similarly, the derivation for L q, so this is L q is L minus 1 minus p naught, yeah, you can see that from the formula for L q because uh, it will be n minus 1 uh, raised to into p n uh, and summation. So, you get this right and therefore, um, this is the expression and here again um, you will see. So, I write the expression for L and this is for 1 minus p naught and therefore, um, you can simplify this and finally, as uh, because again this portion will go to for rho less than 1 and as k goes to infinity. So, this portion will become uh, 1, right, because uh, uh, rho is less than 1. So, I can again divide by, uh, yeah. So, you will be simply left with rho here, k goes to infinity and uh, yes. So, this portion you can show will go to 1, okay. And therefore, this will be rho upon 1 minus rho minus rho, which will be equal to uh, rho L. So, uh, again the same as m m 1 case, yes. Um, yeah, see here um, we can try, yeah, okay. Uh, there are so many ways in which you can sh actually show that this quantity will go to 1, just as we worked out for the L case, the same tricks you can use here and show that this quantity will go to 1. Okay. So, therefore, um, this was the one case and uh, now just let us look at the, uh, uh, the probability p k, which is a very important uh, uh, quantity here. So, uh, p k is rho k into 1 minus rho upon 1 minus rho raise to k plus 1, uh, when rho is not uh, equal to 1 and it is 1 upon k plus 1, when rho is equal to 1. So, this part of course, I have asked you to do it as an exercise. Now, p k is the probability that the system is full, right, because you cannot have more than k people in the system. So, p k is the probability that the system is full which can also be interpreted as fraction of time over the long run. See, remember we are always talking in terms of steady state probabilities. So, over the long run, this also can be interpreted as a fraction of time that an arriving customer will find the system full, because it already has k people. So, therefore, uh, no, uh, no more entries can be allowed and so this will be a fraction of a time of the time when an arriving customer will find the system full. So, therefore, the number of customers blocked per unit time would be the arrival rate lambda into the fraction of time the system is full. And so, p k into lambda is the is an important number that tells you the, num, uh, the number of customers blocked per unit time. And so, this is your lost business, lost revenue. Okay. So, this is this number is useful in determining uh, increase in waiting space. So, I have been talking about this, what I am saying is that see now you can the loss of earnings because of lost customers can be made up by allowing for more customers to join the system. 
So, therefore, now the management has a very important guiding tool. This is you know you can find out that if you are losing that many customers per unit time, then uh, over a day or a week or over a year, whatever your planning horizon, uh, how many uh, customers uh, would have been uh, turned away. And therefore, uh, you can compute the estimate the revenue that you would have earned uh, if those customers were allowed in. And then you can uh, you know uh, compare it with the cost of increasing your services or allowing for more waiting space and so on. So, therefore, um, uh, one can then uh, very comfortably come up to a decision uh, as to uh, if the lost customers the number is large, then you would certainly consider increasing your uh, uh, waiting space and allowing for more people to be serviced and join, come to the system. Okay. So, uh, as I have been saying that uh, you know these uh, are really useful um, uh, models and they help you and the, uh, the management or the people concerned people can always use these uh, as guidelines not, uh, not again go by exact number, but at least uh, they can be very good guidelines. They give they give very good guidelines. Okay. Now, as I said, a special case when rho is equal to one is an exercise uh, in, in the problem sheet, which we will be discussing at the end of this lecture, exercise nine. So I put this, you know, just for you to compute. Very simple, but you can then see that uh, uh, the all the quantities can be computed when rho is equal to one. That means uh, that is uh, this implies that lambda is equal to mu. So the service rate. And so, here again uh, there is no question of the system blowing up, because uh, you it is a finite uh, space or a finite uh, finite space model. Okay. So, um, now the uh, uh, case that uh, again I will not go into detail, but uh, it needs to be mentioned and uh, I have written down the formula for completion sake. So, you, this is the MMSK model. Okay. So, now you have S servers s greater than 1 and again finite space uh, or you know you cannot allow more than k people in the system and certainly your uh, number of servers have to be less than or equal to k otherwise it doesn't make sense if you are allowing for you know, only 10 people to be in the system and you have 12 servers uh, so certainly uh, the uh, uh, two servers will always be idle so um, yeah, so therefore, s is less than or equal to k, and uh, there is nothing really uh, to uh, spend time on arriving all these formulae, because the tra transition diagram is the same as for MMS case, just as here the things were exactly the same as for MM1 case, except that you had uh, you had to stop at uh, sta uh, uh, after state k, and here MMS case uh, this, these two are similar, except that here again you are chopping off after uh, state k is reached. And uh, so, therefore, the same transition diagram, and you can write the same balance equations, and then you can obtain uh, the proper value for p n. So, this will be uh, lambda by mu raised to n upon n factorial p naught for all va n values of n from 1 to s, and uh, for values of n greater than s, s plus 1 to k, this will be lambda by mu raised to n upon s factorial, then 1 upon s raised to n minus s and p naught. So, then p naught can be written as this by summing up all the probabilities. So, this is your value for uh, p naught. Yeah. Now, uh, again we, 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 I, we will write down the formula for L and L q. The derivation is exactly the same as for MMS and uh, then uh, you know continue, go on with the uh, other this thing. Okay. So, when uh, uh, the expression for L q will be derived exactly as for the MMS case, uh, but k is infinity. right? And uh, the argument will be the same exactly. Uh, uh, you will be uh, summing up sigma n minus s into p n uh, from n varying from 0 to k instead of 0 to infinity, that is all. So, therefore, that is why this portion has come in. So, otherwise, when uh, k goes to infinity and for rho less than 1, you will see that uh, uh, this expression will be gone, and so you will be left with this, which is exactly equal to uh, your L q for MMS case. Okay, so, then you can derive that fine and surely your rho is this and so for uh, k becoming very large, then your rho has to be less than 1, okay. this has to be less than 1. Okay. And then uh, the expression for L can be then obtained from L q and uh, uh, so that is all, I mean we just write down the expressions, I am doing this for the completeness sake. 
so that you can yourself if you want to derive them, then you can check that the answers are okay. Now, expressions for w and w q for both m m 1 k and m m s k are not simple. And uh, so, what we basically do is uh, we use the cam computer calculations to uh, given the values of k and then uh, value of s and lambda and mu, we will simply uh, put these values in and uh, write a small program to compute the values of w and w q. And of course, some people in some textbooks you may find uh, just as we plotted graph for MMS, MMS case, the, you know we could plot p naught against the values lambda and s and mu and so on. So, you will find these uh, uh, values tabulated somewhere. Okay. Now, the interesting case out of this is the one in which your number of servers is equal to the number of people allowed in the system. That means, you allow only as many people in the system as you have servers. And of course, uh, an immediate uh, uh, example is your telephone network with S trunk lines. Right? So, if you have S trunk lines, uh, callers get a busy signal when all routes are busy. So, therefore, obviously, uh, they cannot make a call unless some route becomes free. So, um, therefore, the uh, special case is of lot of interest when the number of servers is uh, uh, equal to the number of uh, people allowed in the system. And of course, uh, the uh, other extreme case would be when you know you, you go to a restaurant and it is self service. So, then that means the number of servers is equal to the number of people in the system. So, that of course, is also there. Then um, uh, maternity ward of a hospital because there also see uh, uh, the number of beds that are available, uh, only you can only uh, entertain that many patients, that many women who are going to deliver. And so, you have to turn away other people and so, th these are this case is also of interest. And in here in this case, P s will be the, um, uh, will represent the fraction of time, the system is full. So, otherwise uh, in these two cases, it was P k, but now since s is equal to k, so, P s is the, uh, will represent the fraction of time, the system is full and therefore, again you can find out. So, the number of customers lost per unit time will be then given by lambda P s. Okay. If lambda is your arrival rate, then it will be the number of people who are turned away. Now, uh, this is also called the Erlang's loss. See, Erlang, A k Erlang was a Danish, uh, was a Danish uh, telephone engineer and he is considered to be the founder of queuing theory in the early 20th century. So, you see it is amazing how uh, as, a, as a telephone engineer, he uh, had you know uh, access to these uh, you know um, uh, queuing systems and therefore, uh, he uh, sort of initiated uh, a lot of uh, ideas for you know where the, the whole queuing theory has now been developed. Okay. Um, so, uh, now I like to just look at this um, MMS k case uh, through an example and I have just um, adapted, see this is from Ravindran Phillips and Solberg, but I have adapted it to our system. And so, um, I have just named it the hospital as the uh, Lady Harding Medical College, which is, uh, well, okay, it is not school college, Lady Harding Medical College, which is in New Delhi and this is the maternity wing of the Lady Harding Medical College. So, suppose there are um, uh, 12 deliveries per day. Okay. Now, the thing is that uh, only the labor rooms where the people, where the people come, when the uh, pregnant ladies come with uh, labor pains. So, then they have to wait and then the actual. So, the labor rooms are the bottleneck, because that is where the uh, patients lie, till the delivery uh, has to be uh, has to take place. So, delivery rooms are used for actual delivery and do not take long. And the recovery rooms are not a problem, because uh, once the baby is delivered, then they can be put in the general ward or whatever, any, because there is no, no special medical attention is needed at that time. So, the recovery rooms are also not a problem. Uh, on the average, a labor room is occupied by a patient from uh, 3 to 5 hours. Okay. And then a half an hour is taken for uh, readying the patient for the delivery. So, therefore, um, uh, this is where the bottleneck is, because this is the uh, occupied the longest by a patient. So, uh, and therefore, the, um, the idea here is that you can say that maybe um, uh, six deliveries uh, per day. 
So, the deliveries that can, so uh, one labor room can accommodate uh, six deliveries, uh, sorry, uh, one labor room can accommodate six patients a day and of course, your arrival uh, rate is 12 per day. So, we just now look at the uh, parameters L, Q and the number of patients who get turned away and so on. So, since the number of uh, labor rooms is the bottleneck, so we will um, call the uh, servers, number of servers is the number of uh, labor room, right. So, therefore, as we saw that uh, the system can be modeled as a MMSS case, right. The maternity wing of the Lady Harding uh, Medical College, uh, which is also has the hospital attached to it. So, uh, that will be treated as an MMSS case, uh, since we are treat, treat, uh, taking the um, uh, arrival and the service pattern to be uh, uh, Markovian, right. Okay. So, and then the uh, fraction of maternity patients turned away is P s into lambda, right. So, this is the fraction of time that the system is blocked and then uh, lambda is the arrival rate. So, this is the um, uh, uh, fraction of uh, the maternity patients that will be turned away, I mean the rate of rate of the uh, maternity patients turned away, okay, which uh, the formula for that would be lambda by mu raised to s upon s factorial into 1 upon. So, your p naught would be just adding up to uh, 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 1, uh, I mean your this whole thing, uh, well, okay. Uh, yeah, okay. <laughs> the formula is we have obtained it number of times by now. So, p naught will be 1 upon this only, right, because you will not go beyond s and therefore, this lambda by mu raised to n divided by n factorial uh, n varying from 0 to s, okay. So, um, uh, this is your uh, formula for the number of uh, fraction of uh, maternity patients that will be turned away, because your labor rooms are all occupied. So, compute the occupancy rate of uh, the labor rooms, we compute expected value of p n, which is uh, for which our notation is l. That means, the average number of people in the system and this is will be summation j varying from 0 to s j into p j, right. Because either you do not have any patient or you have 1, 2, 3 up to s only, because you only permit as many patients as there are labor rooms. So, therefore, um, l q is 0, there will be no waiting q. Uh, there will be no uh, people waiting in the queue and uh, summation. Uh, so, 1 minus sigma p j, j varying from 0 to s minus 1 is equal to p s. So, with these conditions we can compute this and uh, that will give us the occupancy rate of the labor rooms. Now, let us compare the um, uh, situation that means, uh, the, uh, the hospital has the or the college authorities have a choice whether to continue with the current uh, two uh, labor rooms or to increase uh, the labor rooms, right. Uh, so, that you do not cause discomfort and you do not turn away too many people, because that does certainly has a reputation on the hospital. If you are saying that all the time your beds are full, your labor rooms are busy, fine. So, uh, when s is 2, uh, the, because your lambda is 12 and uh, uh, you are able to, uh, the labor room can be you occupied 6 numbers, uh, the number of times it can be occupied is 6. So, uh, we will say that the uh, service rate, service rate is 6 and the arrival rate is 12. So, 12 by 6 square into p naught, right, your p s from here and your p naught will be, um, so this is 2, two square upon 1 plus 2 plus 1 by 2 into 2 square, right, because your s is 2. So, just apply this formula and when you do the computations, it comes out to be 4 by 5, because your p naught is 1 by 5 and this is 4. So, 4 by 5 is your, uh, which is you can see is high, 4 that means the fraction of time uh, uh, you turn away patients is 4 by 5 and the number of patients turned away. So, the rate of number of patients turned away per unit time will be 4 by 5 into 12, which is 48 by 5. I mean per day you are turning away 48 by 5 patients, you are not able to accommodate them, right, when you have two labor rooms, okay. Um, and this of course, see here this I do not consider is really important, because this will depend on the, uh, since you are only allowing as many people as there are uh, servers as, as uh, the number of uh, labor rooms. So, therefore, this just tells you that uh, as you are calling it the occupancy rate of the labor rooms, this is 6 by 5. Now, for s equal to 3, when you make the computations, your p naught is 
uh, comes out to be 3 by 19, because now you will go up to uh, 3, the summation, right, sigma n varying from 0 to 3. So, this is the uh, computation and therefore, it comes out to be this, which is 3 by 19. Uh, so, therefore, uh, p naught is of course, the uh, probability that there is no, uh, uh, there is no patient in the uh, labor rooms and here your p naught was uh, 1 by 5. This was 1 by 5 and this is 3 by 19. Okay. Then p 3 comes out to be uh, 4 by 19 and therefore, the loss of patience is 4 by 19 into 12, which is 48 by 19. So, this is definitely less than 48 by 5. Okay. In fact, much, much less than uh, this number. So, therefore, uh, the loss of patience drastically comes down by increasing one labor room. Okay. So, with three labor rooms, uh, the um, average number of patients present in the hospital in the maternity ward L will be given by p 1 plus 2 p 2 plus 3 p 3. And so, uh, that will be this number into 3 by 19, which is your p 0. And so, um, uh, this turns out to be 30 by 19, which is uh, much higher than 6 by 5, because this will be 150 and this is 114. Right. So, um, so therefore, uh, what is being said is that, uh, which of course, is obvious in a sense that L is higher for three labor rooms than when you had two labor rooms. So, this was your traffic incent intensity or utility, whatever you want to call it, uh, for uh, two with two labor rooms and this is. So, why? Because you are turning away less patients and if, if goodwill counts, then certainly uh, it is more important to have lot of goodwill in the community and so, uh, three labor rooms may be worthwhile than two labor rooms. Now, considering the expense of having another labor room and a new doctor, uh, one more doctor, one more labor uh, nurse and so on, but anyway, so this is something for uh, the organization to consider, but anyway, the numbers tell you something and this is a, a good measure to see that uh, your uh, utility would be uh, higher with three labor rooms, obviously, but then the uh, important thing is that you are turning away less patients. Um, so, that you know uh, and uh, the whole idea it was uh, actually in this course, the idea was not to discuss uh, queuing theory extensively, but I essentially wanted to show you, because after having developed uh, uh, probability theory, um, uh, I thought it was important if you get insight into why this theory is so useful and therefore, um, uh, I started talking about uh, you know its uh, applications in the sense that. So, you have seen that uh, throughout uh, your uh, discussion of queuing theory, we have almost used all the concepts of probability theory that we developed right and other stochastic processes also that we have uh, the Markov process that we have discussed already. There also you see that you will be using uh, that we have used uh, uh, the uh, uh, concepts of probability theory. So, the whole idea was that uh, by uh, you know uh, seeing these applications, you get a good insight and a good understanding of the uh, probability theory. So, that was the basic idea it's not that we were trying to really cover um, the uh, Markov processes and queuing theory extensively. So, now I will just discuss uh, exercise 9, where I have collected some problems uh, and then uh, we will continue with the uh, uh, with some more discussions of some more applications of uh, uh, the probability theory we have used, maybe through uh, uh, reliability. Uh, you know, I want to show you the applications of uh, probability theory to reliability which will come later. Okay. So, exercise uh, suppose that at fixed time instance t 0, uh, which is positive, the number x t 0 of. So, now since I have um, collected these uh, problems from different books, so the notation may be a little different. So, here uh, x t naught is the number of customers in an m m 1 stationary queue. We have been referring to uh, the number of customers in a uh, q as n t 0. Okay. So, it does not matter and is, is smaller than or equal to 4. Right. So, at a fixed time the number of customers in an m m 1 stationary q is smaller than or equal to 4. Calculate the expected value of the random variable x t naught as well as its variance if lambda is mu by 3. So, you are given rho, rho is 1 by 3 and uh, you are asked to um, 
compute the uh, expected value of the random variable. So, therefore, uh, see what are the possible values of x t naught? All you are told is that it is less than or equal to 4. So, therefore, the possible values can be uh, 1, uh, 0, 1, 2, 3 and 4. So, we just have to compute the probability, uh, conditional probability that um, uh, probability x t naught equal to say i, uh, given that x t naught is less than or equal to 4. Right. So, you can do this whatever we have learnt enough uh, uh, methods to compute your conditional probabilities. So, once you have the conditional p m f of x t naught, uh, you will be able to then find out the expected value and the uh, variance of this random variable. Okay. So, I have given the hint also, I have said that compute the conditional probability density function of x t naught, given that x t naught is less than or equal to 4. Okay. Now, question 2 says that for m m 1 k model, compute the probabilities p n n 0 1 2 k, when lambda is mu. So, I had uh, uh, said that in the, during the lecture also, that when your rho is 1, uh, we want to find out uh, the uh, uh, probabilities and also the values of l and l q. So, the value for p n I have already given to you as uh, 1 upon, see they all will be the same. Uh, so, therefore, it will be 1 upon k plus 1 right? and now you have to compute l and l q fine. So, that is straightforward. Question 3 is that x t naught is number of customers in a birth and death process and with, with, with t uh, non negative. Let the state space be consisting of 3 states which are 0, 1 and 2. That is the system can have no customers, 1 customers or 2 customers. So, birth and death rates are given by, so the transition diagram you can see uh, that uh, lambda naught will be lambda, but when lambda 1 will be uh, 2 lambda and mu 1 is mu, uh, mu 2 is 2 mu. Right. So, here they have defined the um, uh, arrival rate and the uh, uh, departure rate. Uh, so, the arrival rate is uh, when there is 1, then it is 2 lambda, it becomes 2 lambda. Okay. So, um, set up the balance equations and find the steady state probabilities p naught, p 1 and p 2. So, I have deliberately given this because it is a departure from your, we have not really discussed uh, the case when uh, lambdas also change, but since there are only 3 possible states, you should be able to write down the balance equations and therefore, then compute your uh, uh, the probabilities p naught, p 1 and p 2. So, um, I hope uh, you enjoy uh, doing this. Then question 4 is, um, again, uh, this is an m m 1 q in equilibrium with lambda equal to 2 mu by 3. Find the probability that there are more than 4 customers in the system, given that there are at least 2. So, again, this is a computation of a, uh, this thing. So, you, that means, you are saying that um, uh, your n t, if uh, you know, for a fixed time t, you are saying that uh, n t is greater than or equal to 4, given that uh, at n t is. So, there are more than 4 customers means n t is greater than 4 and uh, then uh, and you are given that n t is at least 2. So, that means n t is greater than or equal to 2. So, conditional probability of n t more than 4 given that um, n t is greater than or equal to 2. So, again a simple uh, computation of the conditional probability. Okay. Now, uh, let us come to question 5. Consider a 2 server queuing system. So, your S is 2, where all service times are independent and identically distributed according to an exponential distribution with a mean of 10 minutes. Yeah, now, the problem 5 and 6 I have taken from Hillier and Lieberman's book and uh, so therefore, uh, the statements are a little different in the sense that uh, see uh, the service times are independent and identically distributed, which we have been referring to as Markov process. So, with a mean of 10 minutes. So, remember the mean is 10, that means the parameter for the exponential distribution will be 1 by 10. Uh, when a particular customer arrives, he finds that both servers are busy and no one is waiting in the queue. So, then what is the probability distribution including its mean and standard deviation of this customer's waiting time in the queue? See, so you are asked to find out what is the uh, uh, the customer comes into the uh, comes to the system both the servers are busy so uh, you are asked to find the probability uh, distribution of this customer's waiting time in the queue so wq 
when two servers are busy right now uh, what will be the uh, see since the two servers are busy that means uh, any one of them can get uh, serviced and then his turn will come so his waiting time is till one of the services gets completed right okay and so therefore um, his waiting time uh, is over in the queue the moment one of the services is completed so now since there are two servers and each of them is uh, you know uh, with the mean time of 10 minutes so one service over that means so see what we have been doing so our mu is 1 by 10 so now when there are two servers our uh, uh, this thing mu will be 2 by mu 2 by 10 so which is uh, 1 by 5 and therefore the corresponding mu will be the mean service time would be 5 5 minutes so therefore uh, you can then compute the so that means it will again be exponential with uh, mean as 5 minutes okay and therefore you can compute the variance Okay, I am just giving the hints and uh, waiting time in the system. Now, you can also determine the expected value and standard deviation of this customer's waiting time in the system. So, in the system, uh, when you want to compute that, it will be um, uh, the waiting time plus your mu, because his own service, see the mean service time is 10. So, therefore, uh, your w is w q plus mu and your mu is 10. Right, the mean waiting service time. See, uh, let's not confuse. Here, I am calling mu as ten, so one by mu will be uh, uh, one by ten, okay? Which is the parameter for the exponential distribution. So, I am calling the mean service time, whichever way you like. If you if you uh, still want to refer to mu as one by ten, then here it will be one by mu because um, his uh, WQ has a mean of five and uh, his serv own service time has an average of 10 minutes. So, then it will be 15 minutes. So, that means, uh, in the system uh, his, his uh, mean uh, time mean time in the system would be 15 and um, so correspondingly you will have the and the variance, because for the for the exponential distribution if uh, mu is uh, uh, if uh, 1 by mu is the mean then 1 by mu square is the variance. So, you can compute accordingly. Okay. So, let us go to uh, problem 6 now. Consider an MM2 queuing system with lambda equal to 4 and mu equal to 3. Determine the mean rate at which service completions occur during the periods when no customers are waiting in the queue. Determine the mean rate at which uh, service completions occur during the periods when no customers are waiting in the queue. So, uh, so here it is lambda is 4, mu is 3 and so you will compute uh, see yeah okay. here it is little little departure and again I thought I will give you the uh, I put the problem in to just to show you see you will compute P 0, P 1 and P 2 right, because there are two people in the system uh, two servers there are two servers. So, therefore, um, either um, no people in the system one person in the system or two people in the system. Um, yeah, so, mean rate when no customer in the queue. So, the mean rate uh, when no customer in the queue I am writing as yeah the formula for that is. So, mean rate when no customer in the queue. So, this I, this I am defining as mu naught p naught plus mu 1 p 1 plus mu 2 p 2 which is and divided by p naught plus p 1 plus p 2. Right. Okay. You see, uh, by definition, mu naught is zero since no service is completed when no one is in the system. So then, your mu one is three, but your mu two becomes six. Right? Twice mu mu one. This is twice mu one. So this is the idea. So the mean rate when no customer in the queue. Then this is how we are defining it. So you compute p naught, p one, and p two and then uh, for an mm2 q and you can then write down this okay now seventh is that a uh, server in an mm1 queuing system works twice as fast where there are at least two customers in the system this means that 
your mu n t is mu if n t is 1. And so, now I am back to my notation, because here uh, n t is the number of people in the system at time t, up to time t. So, therefore, uh, this mean or at time t, that is better, uh, uh, better way to put it. So, um, mu n t is mu, if n t is 1 and mu n t is 2 mu, if n t is greater than or equal to 2. So, here again just change the system a little uh, and now you can write down the balance equations for this system and then what is the condition for the existence of the limiting probabilities and you can compute the probability again. So, I have kept the thing at uh, small and therefore, you can you know do these changes and experiment with that. Okay. Uh, question 8 is what is the average number of customers in an MM1 queuing system in equilibrium given that the number of customers is an odd number. That is uh, you have to find expected value of n t, where n t is an odd number. So, here again I have taken this problem from Hiller and Lieberman. Now, uh, see remember you have to just uh, compute the uh, expected value of. So, your um, n t will be equal to 2 n plus 1 as n varies from 0 1 to n, since we are asking for odd number of people in the system. So, uh, to find the expected value, this is a conditional uh, expectation. So, expectation of n t given that n t is odd. So, which you will write as 2 n plus 1 summation n varying from 0 to infinity 2 n plus 1 into probability that uh, there are 2 n plus 1 people in the system uh, and then divided by uh, number of uh, the probability of there being odd people in the system, which is sigma n varying from 0 to infinity uh, probability 2 n plus 1 line is a customer who was unable to enter an mm 1 c. So, here again um, c means here or k that means finite capacity queuing system at time t 0 decides to come back at t 0 plus 2. What is the probability that the customer in question is then able to enter the system given that exactly one customer arrived in the interval and was unable to enter the system. Okay. So, this I um, will leave uh, for you people to you know really <laughs> Uh, think about it, because this is an interesting and a challenging problem. So, let us see that uh, you are able to crack it. So, the whole idea is that um, between t naught and t naught plus 2, somebody arrives, the system is still full. So, that means exactly at t naught plus 2, there is one uh, vacancy. That means, one of the services has been completed and therefore, this person is able to. So, that means, at t naught the system was full and then uh, exactly at t naught plus 2, the system is empty that has one vacancy and so this person can enter. So, you have to work out uh, this problem. Okay. So, I hope you enjoy doing this assignment sheet.